Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm excited to be sharing a July book list with you all. This video is part of a regular series that I've been doing where I share seasonal reading suggestions for every month of the year. This month I've got some lovely summary books to share with you today and some of them are real favourites of mine so I'm really looking forward to sharing this list and I hope you enjoy it. So first up, of course I'm going to recommend the Comfort Book Club Choice for July which is Joy in the Morning by P.G. Woodhouse. This is such a fun, light-hearted read for summer. It's absolutely hilarious. If you're a fan of the Jeeves and Worcester stories then this is one of my favourite in the series and if you're just new to P.G. Woodhouse then this is a great introduction to his books, in particular the famous Jeeves and Worcester. Bertie Worcester is a young man about town, very well off but a bit of a goof and Jeeves is his manservant or valet who always is getting Bertie out of terrible social scrapes. <laughs> in this book Bertie travels to the countryside to spend time in a little cottage but as soon as he gets there the cottage is burnt down and it's all downhill <laughs> from there with lots of sort of madcap escapades happening and Jeeves of course having to come to Bertie's rescue. It's so funny and a brilliant light-hearted read for summer. We, we will be dis discussing this book on the last Friday of the month. I host the Comfort Book Club with my mum Donna and we'll be chatting about this one on the last Friday, I think that's the 29th of July. If you want to contribute a voice message for the discussion then please make sure you send it in by the 27th of July. I'll put a link in the description box for those of you who want more information about the Comfort Book Club generally and joining in and also specifically on how to send in a voice message so check out the link in the description box. But anyway, I'm looking forward to rereading that one myself in July. And then a book I just read for the first time that I absolutely loved is this one, Appointment with Venus by Gerard Tickle. This is the latest publication by Mandalay Press, which is a wonderful independent publishing company. And they do a really gorgeous job with their books. Every book features a well thought out cover design with a beautiful illustration, a great introduction, and they're just such a pleasure to read. I love the end papers. This one features um, a design by Edward Borden on the cover and the end papers and there's a whoops a matching bookmark in this one too which is such a nice touch. I've been really curious about this book because I actually first read about it in an article in The Scribbler which is one of my favourite literary magazines, I'll link to that in the description box too. And I had an old copy of the book um, but you can see this is a much nicer edition so I couldn't resi resist getting this one and it also prompted me to finally read the book because I've been intrigued since I first read about it but hadn't got around to it. This month I picked it up, it starts in July so it's a great time to start this book. It does then go into September and there are some lovely early autumn scenes described in the book but the beginning is very summery and it's a great one to pick up this month. It was written just after World War II when it was first published and it was made into a film as well that was very popular at the time. It's set during the Second World War on one of the Channel Islands. It's a fictional Channel Island called Amoral or something? Ar Armorel. Armorel, which is based on Sark, the real Channel Island. And it's about a secret operation that is carried out whilst Sark has been occupied by the Germans. And a cow, believe it or not, is central to this operation. 
It's an amazing book. It's so well written. Um, Gerard Tickle was an Irish author, but he wrote this book while staying on Sark himself. And there's this amazing sense of place to the writing. It makes you just want to go to Sark straight away after you've read this. It's so lyrical. It's very poignant. If you like the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, then I think you would really enjoy this book too. There's that blend of sweetness and tragedy that you get in the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society that's present in this book too. So there is some tragedy of war um, that comes into the story, but there's also such a message of love and hope and human decency triumphing as well that makes it a really lovely book. And I, I agree with Rosa rankin Gee, who wrote in the introduction that there's a bit of an escapist quality to this book, which is strange to say about a novel that's set during wartime. But there is definitely a bit of an escapist feel to reading this. And it's very much a life enhancing story and one that I'll remember for a long time, I'm sure. But it's a real page turner too, because you just want to know how this mission goes, what happens, you become very invested in the characters. And it's very well done too, in terms of even the um, enemy characters are for the most part drawn in a very sympathetic way. Um, which is really interesting. But yeah, one I definitely recommend. Then another book that is set during World War II and is just an incredible read. It starts in July 1942 in Paris, and that's Sarah's Key by Tatiana de Rone. Um, this is about a young girl, a young Jewish girl and her family who are rounded up whilst they're living in Paris and they're sent to the Valdive. The young girl hides her brother in a sort of secret compartment in their flat um, just before they're rounded up. And so he doesn't come, but she is terrified of what has actually happened to him when she realizes they won't be returning home. She becomes separated from her parents and sent to a concentration camp, but she's determined to make it back to Paris to find her brother. It's a really heart-rending story, but an incredible read. The film um, that was made featuring Kirsten Scott Thomas of this book is also really good. I really recommend watching that. Um, but I found this such a moving story, and if it's one you've never read, if, if it's one you've never read, I really recommend it. It will stay with you for a very, very long time. And it is quite a heart-wrenching story, but it is so worth reading. And Tatiana Durane, I think, is an amazing writer. And this, again, is just a real page turner. You just want to find out what happens. The story flips back and forth between before a sort of modern setting and then a setting during World War II. But like I said, it starts in July of 1942, so it would be a great book to pick up this month. I'd like to reread it myself, actually, because it's been a really, really long time since I read it. Um, but yeah, I just remember what a powerful story it was. And another great book um, set during World War II being, make an interesting pairing. Appointment with Venus is much lighter, I have to say, but Sarah's Key is just such a powerful read. Really recommend it. And then what I'm listening to on Audible at the moment is The Driver's Seat by Muriel Spark. I read this years ago and it absolutely blew me away. And I'm rereading it now by listening to it on Audible. There's a fantastic version read by Judy Dench. 
She does such a good job, as you can imagine, and I really recommend it. It's a very short listen. It's only, I think, about two and a half hours or so, because you can see it's such a slight book. But Judy Dench does a brilliant job. This is such a strange story. It's about a young, well, fairly young woman called Lisa who decides to go to Italy for um, a summer holiday. The book starts in a very off-kilter way and you realise as you read the story that there's something very wrong with Lisa and that she's got quite a sinister motivation to this holiday and what she wants to happen to her on the holiday. And as you read it, it just gets darker and darker and kind of more and more off kilter, but you start to piece together Lisa's seemingly totally illogical behavior. And you realize that there is in fact a logic behind her actions, but it's a very dark and twisted logic. Like I said, it just is such a, a sort of amazing read. It's like no book I've ever read before, really. Um, it's a very odd book in many ways, but one that just stays with you. And it somehow is really suited to reading on a hot summer afternoon. And you can read it very quickly, or like I said, I recommend listening to the Judy Dench Audible version that is fantastic. So another good summer reading. And then another quite sort of dark, atmospheric summer read that's perfect for these heat wave temperatures that are coming up is A Wreath of Roses by Elizabeth Taylor. Again, this is one I read a long time ago, but yet again, it's one that has really stayed with me. I think it's Elizabeth Taylor's darkest novel because it does follow themes of suicide and murder and loneliness. It's quite a dark story, but Elizabeth Taylor is such a good writer and she creates this amazing, suspenseful atmosphere when you're reading this. You just want to keep turning the pages, finding out what happens next. It's about a young woman who goes and stays with some friends of hers in the countryside. Um, as she's travelling down by train, she watches um, the suicide of a man on the train track. And as the sort of temperature mounts in the summertime, tensions generally increase too. Um, after that very sort of off-kilter start to her holiday, she becomes drawn to a man who in some ways she feels is quite dangerous, but a part of her really is drawn to him. Uh, like I said, it's a very atmospheric read and it's just quite a dark, tense, thriller type story as well. But you get a real sense of a hot, hot summer when this book is set. So it's a really good heatwave read. And like I said, it's darker. I mean, Elizabeth Taylor's novels often have quite a dark bent to it. This is definitely one of her darkest, but it will just really stay with you. It's quite a mesmerizing read. So another one I recommend, and it would be, again, a good pairing with the driver's seat in a way. They just both have that slightly off kilter, dark, slightly twisted edge to them. For something sort of lighter, <laughs> Then another favourite book of mine is One Fine Day by Molly Panter Downs. For some reason, I had remembered this as being set on a June day. I read it a few years ago now, but it says on the back that it's a hot July day in 1946. So I want to reread this because I had convinced myself it was a day in June, but apparently it's a day in July. So I want to reread it myself this month. And I love this story, as you've gathered, it's set on one day, a hot day in July, and it really follows the day from the perspective of a young married woman who is really struggling to keep a large house going 
in the aftermath of World War II. This is set in the July of 1946, so just after the end of World War II, when the old sort of class system in Britain is really crumbling, there's a new future emerging, um, but there's that feeling of some tension in moving from the past into the future. But in general, there's a very hopeful feel to the story. And I just love following the day from this woman's perspective. And there are quite mundane actions that she does, like going shopping and sitting on a hot bus to picking a bowl of gooseberries from the garden and you follow her thoughts and her reflections on the past, the present and the future. And it really is a special little book, this one. It really deserves to be a classic, I think, and a brilliant choice to read this month. I really recommend it. And then as the world has been sort of so crazy lately, I've been indulging in some real sort of comfort reading. And for me, the sort of quintessential comfort reading is often returning to books of my childhood. And Monica Edwards is one of my favourite comfort reads. She wrote sort of pony and family stories, um, mainly in the sort of 1950s. And I read them when I was little and loved them. And I've been rereading a few of them recently. And one of my favourites that I remembered is actually from later on in the series. She wrote two main series, the Romney Marsh books, which are mainly set um, around Rye and that part of Sussex, which is just such a brilliant setting. I love that. And then the Punchbowl Farm books. And the series eventually kind of merged together. But this is really one of the Romney Marsh books featuring the young heroine Tamsin and her friends. And this is one that is actually more towards the end of the series, but you can read it as a standalone. If you find a secondhand copy, you can definitely read it as a standalone and enjoy it still. And I reread it recently because I remembered it was one of my favorites from my childhood and I loved returning to it. It's such a sweet story. It's set in July. It was the perfect sort of summer read. And um, in the book, Tamsin is rescued from drowning by a dolphin. And apparently dolphins have been spotted in Rye Harbour in the past. And Monica Edwards sort of based part of the story on real life stories that she'd heard about dolphins. And this one dolphin really befriends Tamsin. Um, but because it's such a friendly dolphin and loves being around humans, playing with them in the water, it attracts the attention of a man who wants to capture the dolphin and use it in his aqua circus. So Tamsin and her friends have to stop that from happening and make sure that the dolphin remains free and happy in the wild. Like I said, just a really sweet story and one that I've thoroughly enjoyed rereading myself. And it's a great summer read for a hot July afternoon. So one I've really enjoyed. And then that one made me think of another favorite book of mine that involves a dolphin. Maybe Mary Stewart fans can guess which one I'm going to say because that's This Rough Magic by Mary Stewart. In general, I really recommend Mary Stewart as a fantastic choice for light summer reading. She wrote a lot of um, sort of adventure, slight thriller stories, always with a bit of a romance in them. And they're not too scary. They're very much about the locations that the heroines go to and the adventures that they get sort of caught up in and they're really fun they were written in the sort of 50s and 60s for the most part this rough magic is a favorite of mine it's set in Corfu over an idyllic summer and again it's about a young woman who gets caught up in an adventure and um, there's also a bit of a romance story that happens but she also befriends a dolphin who um 
is in danger in the book too. And I always think of this one, um, when I was to read Dolphin Summer, the two just go together in my mind and both make such fantastic summer reading. This is an adult book, obviously, whereas Dolphin Summer is a children's book. But if you're in the mood for something just really light, easy to read, a bit of armchair travel, a bit of light romance, then Mary Stewart is definitely a great writer to pick up. And this rough magic will transport you to Corfu, which I think is wonderful. So highly recommend that one. And then June's Comfort Book Club read was of course a Sky Painted Gold by Laura Wood. If you enjoyed that, then I would really recommend reading another YA book of hers called Under a Dancing Star. This book is set in Italy. It starts in June, but then very quickly moves to July, which is when the young heroine B goes off to Italy to stay with some relations of hers. And there she meets a young man um, called Ben. And uh, they have a lot of sort of back and forth banter. As you might be able to tell from the um, title of the book, which is taken from a quote from Much Ado About Nothing by William Shakespeare. This story is actually partly based on Much Ado About Nothing and particularly the romance between Bene Benedict and Beatrice in that story. That's actually one of my very, very favourite Shakespeare plays. In fact, probably my very favourite, although for obvious reasons I love The Tempest too, and actually there are references to The Tempest in this book, so these two kind of connect in a Shakespearean sort of way, which is fun. Um, but obviously, I mean, they're both very light, but this one is just, again, another really fun, quick read. I love the sort of um, reference to one of my favourite Shakespearean plays, and it's just the Italian setting is amazing in this one as well. So again, just a nice fun read. And then if you want a bit more of a real sort of page turner action type book, something that would be great to take on the plane or on a train, for instance, if you're traveling somewhere for your summer holiday, then there's a series I would really recommend and the first one is called East of Hounslow by Karam Rahman. This was one of my top books from 2021. And after I shared about this book in my video about my top reads from that year, someone sent me a message saying, I've just read East of Hounslow after you recommended it. And I absolutely loved it. And I never would have picked this book up if you hadn't mentioned it. So I'm so glad you did. And it's so amazing when I get messages like that. I mean, it, it really makes it so special when I hear that kind of thing, especially if I'm introducing books to people that, you know, they maybe wouldn't hear about otherwise. And I don't read a lot of like modern crime or modern thrillers but I really like this series. It's just so fun. It's about a young Muslim man growing up in London who is still sort of living at home with his mum, um, but somehow he gets so was like accidentally recruited by MI5. <laughs> and it's just got such an amazing voice that comes through. I think Karim Rahman is an amazing writer. The first half of the book, I would say, is a lot lighter than the second half, which explores much darker themes, but it's just all so well done. It's such a page turner. Like, I had to just keep reading it. Really light and really easy to read. Um, my best friend in London, I told him about this book too, and he really enjoyed it as well. We did a buddy read, which was a reread for me of this, and it was just really fun to read it together as well. Um, but anyway, I want to read the next one in the series, which is Homegrown Hero. So I'm looking forward to just spending a lazy sort of afternoon, or I might save it for when, um, I'm going away more towards the end of August as something to kind of read on the train, I'm not sure, but I think I'll probably pick it up this month and I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, if you just want a real sort of page-turning book that is just easy to read and 
will keep you engrossed on a plane or something, then I do recommend this series. And then my suggestion for sort of bedtime reading book, something to have on your bedside table for July, is this collection of short stories, which is Midsummer Mysteries by Agatha Christie. And you know how much I love Agatha Christie. I think it's so fun to read a short story just before you go to bed sometimes. And she really is the queen of cozy crime. This is a lovely collection of stories and I think would be a great choice to have on your July bedside table. All of the stories are obviously fairly summery. So that would be a good choice for this month. And then my non-fiction book recommendation for the month is British Summertime Begins by Isenda Maxstone Graham. The School Summer Holidays 1930 to 1980. This is a fascinating book. I'm such a fan of Isenda's um, previous book, Terms and Conditions, which was all about what real life boarding school was like for women um, in the interwar years and also just sort of post World War II as well. As someone who read a lot of boarding school stories like the Chalet School books and Marilee Towers and the St. Clair's, you know, all that sort of thing, when I was little, it was really fascinating to read Ascender's book about the realities of boarding school at that time, which was generally pretty horrific, <laughs> I have to say. And with this book, she's done a really fascinating exploration of what the school summer holidays really meant in this time period from 1930 to 1980. And she explores many different themes surrounding the summer holidays, which of course in the UK generally starts at the end of July. That's the real start of the summer holidays. So hence why this is a good book to pick up this month. Um, but she explores so many themes around the summer holidays. One that she really explores a lot is how much freedom children had, really quite a scary amount often, you know, they were just sort of let out the back door, spent the whole day away from home, roaming the streets, whether they were in the countryside or in the city. And it's just really fascinating and an amazing slice of social history too. So I found this a really engrossing read and one that I highly recommend. I think Ascender is such a good writer and she writes really engagingly always on the topics that she chooses. So yeah, highly recommend this one. But anyway, those are all of my choices for July. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do give it a thumbs up if you did and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face, it pops up on the screen. But do let me know what books are you hoping to read this July? Do any of the books that I've mentioned capture your curiosity? Do you want to dive into any of these books yourself? I'd love to know. But thanks so much for watching. Extra big thanks as always to those of you who pressed the super thanks button on my last video. I so appreciate your support. But thank you to everyone who watches my videos and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend ahead of you filled with some good books, I hope, and sunshine as well. But take care. Goodbye.